Hi, Ron One here in uh, Little Weird Shop, and we're going to take a look at and try out the Slab Stitcher. Uh, this is shipped by D. Cheney Company Woodcrafter, and I uh, just got it in today. So, let's open this up, see what's in it, and then we'll use it. Okay, I've cut the tape. Flip this open. Ah, it looks pretty nice and neat in here. A little thank you for purchasing the uh, slab stitcher kit. This is the um, Master Pack starter kit, which they were having a dis big, pretty good discount on it. So I thought I'd give it a try. See if I so help me do some um, bow ties and different inlays at a much quicker pace. Um, gives you some instructions here on what to do. It says you should wax the template edges. Uh, blah blah blah. We'll go through that as we use it. But let's just see what's in here for now and this actually cost me $69.98 so in this uh, starter pack you get uh, uh, some of their bow ties looks like two of each of the main three sizes I think they actually have a one or two larger than this large so here's a couple large I got ended up getting walnut and there is um, the small and here's the medium walnut they have about four different woods you can get they look pretty darn precise. They look pretty good. They're quarter inch thick. So you get some of those butterflies with the starter kit. You get the bit. Um, spiral down cut solid carbide bit. Uh, take a look at this. Must be a bearing or something in here too. Oh yeah, the complete gizmo. I hope that works in my router. So here's the bit. Spiral down cut white side, which are excellent bits um, so get that and here is the uh, template uh, tool whatever you want to call this not sure how that's going to work exactly yet and then here is the three um, plexiglass holders or inserts to cut out the various sizes like there's the large for those biscuits That'll go in a fixture, and there's the small and the medium here as well. So, and down here is the main part of the fixture. That um, those inserts go in to route out for the shapes. Let's get this thing out of here. So they're pretty nice. Plexiglass there. And how this works here? Let's close this up here. Use this as a surface here. Now we'll just move it away. So then these, how this works is these go in here. It says to wax those edges so they'll go in there in and out better, but there it clamp this to your whatever you're going to cut the bow ties in, then you drop in whatever size you want, and you use their bit and their guide here and um, route it out. And then all you got to do is square the four corners and this should drop right in. Should. So kind of looking forward to using this and see how easily it works. And again, the other two sizes of this are still wrapped up there. This is the large one. So now we've got to find a project to use this on. Okay, I'm going to give this uh, slab stitcher its first test on an actual project. Hopefully I don't screw it up. This is some good walnut here. but So anyway, I got the cleaned off the top of my workbench with some mineral spirits to make sure it's good and clean. I put down some double face tape. So I'm going to double face tape both of these halves of walnut. That's what I'm making here is a split walnut uh, serving tray. So I'm going to hook these together with the space between them and with the uh, two little biscuits from the slab stitcher kit. If I can get this, peel this backing off of this double face tape. There we go. So this is the edge. Stick that down right there. This is my spacer. That's the space I'm going to leave between the two. A three quarter inch space. So now some more little face tape down on this other side here. Woo! That's all I had of that one. Uh-oh. Hang on, I got some more up here. Hope it's the same thickness. Hang on. Okay, I had some more, uh, just a wider one. So I've already put two pieces on, peeled the uh, backing off of it. Now let's put this in place here. Up against the three-quarter inch spacer. 
press it down, pull the spacer out. Now we got it stuck good. So next step will be to clamp the, uh, we've already got the large template in here, the large butterfly or biscuit. So I need to mark where I'm going to put them, then we'll clamp this on here and do the one, then the other. So next thing is to figure out where I want to put the biscuits in here. I'm going to put two, and I'm going to epoxy them, make sure it's real strong. And if that don't seem strong enough, I'll put one in the center up on the back side. And then, of course, the handles are going to cross this. That's going to help hold it together, too. But I think two large ones would be pretty strong, with, uh, especially with epoxy. So let me figure out where I'm going to put these, and we'll be back. All right, that's the spacing I'm going to use. It's uh, three and three quarters in from the edge. And there's just going to be a slight bit trimmed off of the edges here, uh, just the blade width, once I get this hooked together. And uh, the handles come in oh, a good half inch or so on each side. So I think, uh, you know, the handles there, that's pretty good. So, get my marks on there and then we'll get that template clamped down next. Okay, I got it uh, marked. Okay, both those boards are double face taped down. Got marked where I want the uh, bow ties. I got the first one laid out there. I've got it clamped in and one thing I realized on this is because uh, of the size of this whole thing here, it's best if you put your piece in the corner close to the edges so the clamps will reach it so that's one thing I found out and then I guess if you were going to do something bigger uh, spanning like a table or something you'd have to double face tape the fixture down which I think they recommend and then of course depending on the type of double face tape you use under that uh, fixture there you'd have to allow for that thickness like I'm using that the one that has just a little bit of foam on it so you'd have to add that so you're gonna cut the right depth so next thing to do is cut out this first uh, bow tie and I can see the most important thing to not do is to lift the router up unless it's off because it'd be very easy to just lift it up a little bit and run off out of the uh, form there and ruin the uh, inlay cutout pattern. So, wish me luck because I'm holding I do stupid things. Okay, I did the uh, first uh, bow tie with the fixture and squared the edges up and it looks like, I don't want to push it all the way down in there yet, but it looks like it's fitting really good. I'm gonna, with no gaps, but um, so now I'm gonna set up and I'll film doing the second one over here. And plus I'm not gonna use these walnut bow ties. I'm waiting for some others to come in. I wanna use a contrasting color. So I ordered the other two they have, which was cherry and I forget if the other one was maple, but uh, looks like the fixture works good, easy, and the fit's good. <clears throat> so go to number two. Well, wouldn't you know it, I forgot to turn the camera on, but I cut the second one, no issues. Um, so let's pull the fixture off of there and see how it, square the corners up and see how this one, if it looks as good as the other one. It actually went a little better for me. I turned the uh, router a uh, bit up a little faster and it seemed to cut a lot easier and uh, not bad so far. Well, I tell you, it's just such a small little bit you got to take out of the corner. You definitely don't want to go too far. I think that's good. in there a little bit for now pretty good pretty dang good huh. I think I'm gonna like this thing I think it's gonna make uh, putting these in a lot quicker so I can uh, knock out projects quicker not have to charge as much so looking good now if I get my uh, different butterflies in because uh, I want to do the contrasting wood I can uh, stick that together and then uh, trim the edges, just the hair off of the edges, 
uh, figure out what kind of edge, if any, I'm going to put around it and sand it. Uh, probably best thing to just glue those things into while it's still stuck down to the uh, bench top. So, uh, next step, probably uh, we'll just wait for the biscuits. Okay, with my uh, order of extra uh, butter uh, bow ties, I ordered some maple and some cherry. So I'd have walnut, maple, and cherry, and I think they're talking about offering more wood species. Well, they sent me a sample free of tiger maple, and that's what I'm going with in here. I'm going to use two of the tiger maples they sent me. So those are just sitting halfway in there, so I'm getting prepped up now to epoxy those in there. All right, I epoxy these in with um, Gorilla Glue 15 minute epoxy. I don't know if that's focusing or not, but anyway, Gorilla Glue epoxy. Uh, pounded them in. They were pretty tight. It seems like these newer ones I got were a little bigger than the original ones I had, and I measured them, and they were, but they still worked all right. They went down all the way, so just barely protruding there, just enough to sand off, so we'll see how it goes. After we sand it, see how it looks, see if I made a mistake using that those tiger maple ones but I don't think so I think the contrast will look good especially for something else I've got going on here you'll see later on this uh, tray okay I sand hand sanded all the edges haven't trimmed its length yet I'm gonna wait till I wrap this edge the outer edge in case it chips out and then trim the length. I'm only going to need minimum off of the length about a blade width. But uh, I think on these outer edges, and I think I decided to just do the outer edges, not the ends, but we'll see how it looks with just the outer edges. And what I'm going to use, I think, is this bead bit here. See if this is even going to focus here. This sucker, it puts a little bead in line on the edge. And what I'll do is I'm going to take a piece of the same wood and I'll run it down the edge here and run it down the edge of that and see how it looks before I uh, do it to the tree. That's the plan. Okay I did a test run with this uh, bead bit in the router and this is exactly what I'm looking for. Not sure if you can see this. Puts a little rounded, rounds the corner and a line down the side. And that's the look I want on that tray. Plus it'll kind of protect that edge because that's rounded now. It's not a sharp edge. I still think after I think I'm going to do the edges on the tray next and then see if I want to do the ends. For some reason I'm saying leave the ends square. But we'll see. Anyway, that's where I'm going. I love that bit. That's kind of one of my favorite routing details. Okay, I cut the width down, uh, or the length of it down, cut each side. Uh, not much came off each side, but now it's the uh, same distance from the bow tie on each side. So now I'm going to size up the handles and think about if I need that same bead on the ends or not. Okay, here's uh, one set of handles I'm contemplating on using. Uh, I'm going to dig out some that I think I have that are longer. I think this burnished silver here will look good once that's finished because that's going to darken quite a bit. So, uh, kind of mainly just debating on the length here. I think I've got some that are about 8 inches. So, let me see if I can find them. Okay, I've got the uh, longer handles, which I will show you in a minute. I'm just finishing up drilling holes. I've got the uh, countersink in and the hole through on three of them. Now, I'm just getting ready to finish up, or two of them. Ready to finish up this end with the hole through. So, one, 
Okay, there's the, see the countersinks in the hole through. This is the side I laid it out on this side on the top of the tape. So let's go over and take a look at those bigger handles on here. Roll it. So there it is with the longer handles on there. Got it all mounted. Countersunk the screws in the back. Now, get to sanding this thing. Take the handles off, sand it. Get the finish going. Double check the fit here. That's gonna work. So now I'll get my little 220 sand and we'll install these things and we'll start finishing. Okay, I put a little glue with the Q-tip here in the hole, switched it around and tapped it in with the rubber mallet. And there's my little decor. Just a little touch of something different, you know? Okay, there it is. I just set the handles back on for a minute to give you a look with the little button decor on there and so now I'm ready to tack it off and uh, start putting some, I think I'm going to use water locks on this. Okay, this is after the first coat of water locks. The uh, maple button sure got a lot darker than the maple bow ties. Well, that's okay, it looks good. Some of that tiger striping started to come out in the... Uh, bow ties since those are tiger stripe maple so far so good all right the split uh, serving tray is done <clears throat> the main reason I did this whole thing was to test out this slab stitcher the uh, system for installing um, bow ties and other inlays and uh, it was a tested out and it's a quick easy way to do all different size bow ties and they have other inlays too they've got some butterflies they got dragonflies they got dog bones anyway if you need a quick and easy way to put them in and all of their inlays are very precision I found these to just fit fantastic so uh, big thumbs up to slap stitcher and I think this first project I did with it uh, I like it so I've got the maple wood tiger maple bow ties that when I reordered some bow ties from slap stitcher they sent some of those as a free sample so I wanted to use a contrasting wood so I used those they look terrific I uh, put maple buttons around the edges and they kind of brushed aluminum looking handles and I'm very pleased so there it is the split tray hooked with slab stitcher slab stitchers bow ties we gone.